So this project is going to be a faceted bowl. I use, I'm going to, we're going to use four pounds of clay and the tool that we'll use to facet with is this, this wire that's made from a spring that I stretched out. Uh, you can go to a hardware store and get an assortment of springs and um, just grab them with some pliers and pull them out as hard as you can. You can get a real long stretched out spring. This is going to be a bowl, but I'm going to start it a little bit differently than most bowls. I'm going to center the clay and open it up and instead of starting out with the bowl shape, we're going to have a tall, very narrow, thick-walled cylinder. So this cylinder is I would say the clay walls are, are nearly an inch thick and the opening is about an inch across. It goes all the way down. There's about a half an inch of floor at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the pot. I like to use a rib at this point to get the outside not just smooth, but, but the, I try to scrape the wet clay off of the outside. Now using this uh, stretched out spring, a uh, common way to do facets with the stretched out spring is to simply make straight up and down cuts in the clay wall, um, which would give you vertical textures. I'm going to do this a little bit differently to show you how to create an interesting texture with the same wire, but it won't be vertical lines that spin around the pot. What I'm going to do, first of all, it helps to have a long stretched out wire for this. What I'm going to do is, on this side of the, of the pot, I'm going to make facets that go straight up the pot. But as I'm cutting straight up the pot, my wire is going to start to the right and I'm going to move it from right to left as I'm cutting up. I don't want to take very much out. I'm trying to keep these facets as thin as possible. And I particularly want to be careful right up here at the rim. I don't want to gouge a lot of clay out right up there at the rim. So after the first cut, I turn the wheel 180 degrees and make the second one I'm on the opposite side. The third cut is in between the first two and I'm going to go all the way around the pot faceting this way so that the facets are, are symmetrical. One thing to, to keep in mind to think about the direction that you throw. So I throw clockwise, most people throw counterclockwise. If you are trying to get this texture and you throw uh, counterclockwise, make the exact same facet except you start on this side and you move from left to right. Once we start opening this bowl up, you'll see what I mean. Okay, we have facets all the way around. The next step is to open this up and spread it out without touching the outside of the pot anymore. And what happens is all of these facets will, as the bowl is stretched out, the facets will open up. And since my wheel turns clockwise, the vertical, each vertical facet will spin this way. What I try to do is compress the rim and pull the rim out so I can get a, my hand in there and go back and forth, stretch the, the bowl out, and then pull the rim out. So right now I'm fanning out my fingers inside the bowl. Go back to the rim, compress the rim, and pull it out. Open the bowl by fanning out your fingers. Now you can start to see what's happening. The, these facets, it start, instead of going straight up and down the pot, 
like they were when I first cut them, they're starting to stretch and spin around the pot. As the pot is opening up, the, the clay itself is twisting. So the facets are starting to spin around the pot. And each of these individual gouges happen from moving the wire from left to right. They were small, like this. Now they're s stretching out and becoming more open. So I'm going to keep opening the pot until I get it about as thin as I can. Uh, paying special attention to the rim because on this, this type of pot with these facets, if I had gouged like right in here, I have a pretty deep gouge that went right to the rim. That's going to be the weak spot on this pot. It's going to want to stretch there more than anywhere else. Okay, this one is about as stretched out as, as far as I can get it. This is the weak spot. If I keep pulling it out, it's just going to get weaker and weaker at that point. But I think it's, I've got it stretched out about as much as I can. And the rim is still in pretty good shape. So at this point, I can cut it off and, and uh, let it get leather hard, and then we'll trim it.